finance guru and real estate mogul Grant Cardone just filed a massive lawsuit against former T-Mobile CEO John Legere. A hundred million dollar defamation suit. I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute, you guys. But the real reason that I want to talk about Grant Cardone today is because he seems like he's always kind of at the center of scandal or things that are like just negativity like people have called them scammers like we're gonna go over some of that here in just a minute and that's really what the basis of this lawsuit is about this guy called him a con man and a BS artist today we're gonna be talking about Grant Cardone's YouTube channel specifically because it looks like there's some really interesting things going on on his channel when I did a, a deeper dive and full disclosure I've talked to Grant Cardone's uh, team before we talked about YouTube strategy uh, but there are some things that I'm noticing that are like oh my gosh did he get two million plus uh, subscribers and millions and millions of views by buying them well we're gonna get to the bottom of all of that today on the Rafiti channel all right you guys welcome to the channel if you're new here, my name is Scott Simpson, or some of the folks around here know me affectionately as Uncle Raph. For the last 10 years, I've been a professional influencer and an agency owner running YouTube channels from zero all the way up to millions and millions of subscribers. And it is my life's mission to teach you guys that revenue is greater than fame. Let's dive into Grant Cardone, folks. Former T-Mobile CEO John Legere has been slapped with a $100 million defamation suit for calling personal finance guru Grant Cardone a con man or a BS artist. Legere, who built T-Mobile into the third largest U.S. telecom operator before leaving the helm in 2020, has more recently taken to tussling with Cardone. Ooh, I like that alliteration. Taken to tussling. A real estate investor and internet celebrity who wrote the New York Times bestseller, The 10X Rule. If you guys know anybody who's like a huge fan of Grant Cardone, you know everything. Thing is 10x hey, brother 10x brother is that that's my uh, grant cardone i don't know how well i did there you tell me leave it in the comments below so grant cardone's been in some hot water lately the huff post did an expose on him last year where they basically found some people who were accusing him of doing certain things accusing him of certain business practices that they felt were a little bit on the shady side now you guys can determine that i make no judgment these are all my opinions but uh here's what huff post says it says grant cardone or cardone shares tips on how to build wealth to his 2.4 million YouTube subscribers, 4.4 million Instagram followers, and 6.8 million Facebook followers. We're going to analyze all that here in just a minute. While flaunting his own, a waterside mansion in Florida, a private jet emblazoned with his corporate logo, and nonstop hobnobbing with celebrities. Now, deeper in the article, they give some examples of some people who have some not nice things to say about him. So, in HuffPost, it says the owner of an Ohio power washing business claims he tried to cancel the firm's $497 a month contract after eight weeks, but said he was unable to do so. An employee from Cardone's training company stated they could only cancel after their contract was completely fulfilled, and the firm later sued for the remaining $16,401 of the contract the case was settled. So the guy tried to cancel his contract. Sounds like it was a multi-year contract for 500 bucks, probably four years, I'm assuming at 6,500 bucks a month. And he tried to cancel after a couple months and they sued the guy because he's like, they're like, nah, 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 bro. You signed a contract, you're in it for life. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a big fan of like contracts where it's like getting people into financially distressing situations but teach their own. I mean, if you sign a contract, then you, you better be willing to fork it up. All right, another one, Lisa Williams, the owner of Jubilee Family Chiropractic, struggling family business in Virginia. Now they say struggling. I don't know how struggling it is. Like you, you go to school to become a chiropractor, you get a chiropractic license, you're a doctor, you can make some really decent money as a chiropractor. I guess you can also not make that decent money as a chiropractor. So she said, they signed up for a six year training contract at 800 bucks a month, just under 800 bucks a month. A fan of Cardone, she claims she maxed out her credit cards to attend training sessions with him. Williams wrote to the company in 2020 at the height of the pandemic to explain that her business was struggling with astronomical business debt and tight cash flow and asked for some understanding about her late payments. However, she was sued in 2022 for the remaining $52,000 on her training contract. The case was also settled. How do you feel about that? Leave it in the comments below. I personally feel like people should hold up their end of the bargain. 
I have always paid all of my debts, no matter what they are. And I failed at business a number of times. But I also understand that some people get themselves into situations that are difficult. And a worldwide pandemic is definitely something that would be like, all right, let's give some grace here. I'm not going to pass too much blame on Grant Cardone because I know that his enterprise is massive and he's got a lot of employees that work for him. And so probably not everything gets up to him. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if you sign an agreement, know what you're getting into. So as you guys can see, Grant is kind of embroiled into a lot of these business practices that make him appear as kind of a, a, a ruthless or cutthroat business owner. And then also an opportunistic, right? He sells these business programs. They may work for some people. Some people, they probably don't work. But at the end of the day, you're going to pay. So let's translate that business savvy over to his YouTube channel. Grant has 2.57 million subscribers now in 2024. He's got 5,900 videos. A lot of those are gonna be shorts. And his most popular video has 10 million views on his long form, on his shorts. His most popular video has 21 million views. Let's talk about his long form content here for just a second. His two most successful videos on his YouTube channel. His highest viewed video is one minute and 33 seconds. His second highest viewed video is one minute and six seconds. I almost guarantee that these were both run as ads. That's why they have so many views. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to run ads on your channel. What I'm curious about is how many of these subscribers came from him running ads? If you look at his most recent content, Grant is averaging between, I'd say nine and 30 to 40,000 views on each video. But there is no rhyme or reason to the strategy that he has on his account. It seems like a smattering of a lot of different chunks of content. Like there's content of him sitting talking to celebrities and, and Tucker Carlson in this one, Arnold Schwarzenegger in this one. Here he is like on a car lot where I learned to sell. There is some talking head. Here's some podcast. Here's him talking in a car. The channel is all over the place. My thought process behind the growth of this channel is that I would almost guarantee that majority of the subscribers and views on the long forms have come from paid ads. Now, whether that's wrong or whether that's right, that's up for interpretation, but you can definitely tell that it has played a negative impact on his overall channel growth. Because the point is, if you have 2.57 million subscribers that are engaged, that are not paid for, that did not come subsequently from an ad, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna have videos that do 4,400 views. That is extremely low. And it makes it look bad. It makes it look really bad. Another thing that I want to show you, just a, a quick tip for the, those of you who don't understand the ins and outs of YouTube and how to spot something that has been run as an ad. If you look at, let's say this one right here, it's 30 minutes long, 7.1 million views. You look at this video, it's got 155,000 thumbs ups. And it's got 10,000 comments. We're going to use this as a baseline for engagement. So if it gets 155,000 thumbs ups and 7 million views, this is the baseline for engagement. Now let's go over to a video that has just a little bit more views. It's only got 5,200 thumbs ups and 239 comments. So when there's a huge difference in engagement rates between videos, and you look at a video that's got 20,000, 30,000 views, and it's only got like four thumbs ups. It's generally safe to say that that video was run as an ad. It could also have just gotten traffic from Google, but it's safe to say that it was run as an ad, especially given the length of the videos. Now, if you watch the content itself, it's kind of structured more like an ad format. But the point is, I think that this is a terrific case study for those of you who are thinking about using the promotion tool or those of you who are thinking about running ads to your content to get more traffic, to get more subscribers, to get more views. If you do that, you're most likely gonna end up with low engagement rates among the subscribers, the people that are your warm audience. You have to be very careful about that because it can make you look very, very bad if you have a lot of subscribers, but you get very little engagement. Let me show you another example. Peng Jun is another influencer. He's got 169,000 subscribers on his channel. If you look at his most popular, once again, 921,000 views, 516,000 views, 353,000 views. It's got one minute, one minute, three minutes. And then you've got this one here, how to get verified on Facebook. I think that this one was probably legit. But if you look at this, how to make money online doing what you do, this one is structured like an ad. There are no likes. There is no engagement. Again, look at this one. No comments, no likes, no engagement. And then if you look at his latest videos with 169,000 subscribers, he's getting less than a thousand views on a lot of his content. And then here's this one using AI. One minute, 27 seconds. It's got a 
you know, 29 X multiple on his average views, but it's, it's most likely an ad. Let's take a look at that one. 68 thumbs ups on 70,000 views, six comment. Here's my advice, you guys, take it or leave it. Uncle Raph's words of wisdom. Don't run ads to get traffic. Don't run ads to try to encourage organic growth. If you guys want me to make a video on that, maybe I'll actually do some experiments where I'll show you what happens when you run ads. If you guys would like me to do that, leave it in the comments below. That's a little bit more labor intensive of a video to do, but uh, but I'm happy to do it. Just kind of set the record straight. One more thing, I wanna show you guys this. Grant Cardone announced just today, actually, I'm recording this April 30th, that retired CEO John Legere's motion to dismiss Grant Cardone's $100 million defamation lawsuit was denied by Florida courts today. Here's what he says. Here's what Grant says. The out of work CEO will have something to do now as I'm going to go 24 seven, 365, making sure he never again attempts to cause damages to my brand name, reputation, or business ever again. You don't want to get on Grant Cardone's bad side, everybody. <laughs> Let's just say that. Oh, hopefully he doesn't see this. <laughs> so the question is, did Grant Cardone buy his subscribers, buy his views? The initial analysis is probably, again, I've got to be careful with the way that I speak. I don't want to say anything that could be conclusive. Most likely, in my opinion, his two most successful videos were run as ads that probably drove a massive amount of traffic onto his platform. Folks, don't do it, there are better ways. In fact, if you wanna learn how to grow a YouTube channel the right way, I've got a 60 page blueprint down in the description below. Click the link down below for the blueprint. All sorts of like goodies and giveaways down there. If you guys wanna learn how to go viral though, I got a video right here, it's amazing. Catch you on the next one, later.